How was Bijan's first day? I mean, like, like Clark, all these guys, man. It's the first day out here. Um, there's it's a lot of teaching, build up progressions. So at least they all pass a look test, Eli. Mm -hmm. And the low one local kid, Chase Bryce. Uh, a lot of local kids. Uh, Chase Bryce from Grayson High. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, same thing from App State. That, uh, he was at the East West game and mm -hmm. in the trials today. Yeah, no, there's quarterbacks. Again, a lot of things are they're going to be foreign to them. Just the way that we logistically operate, the way you communicate. Guys that, you know, they be getting calls, signs from the, you know, with those whatever signs they put those. Yeah, the, the look at me signs or whatever. And the guys in the highlight are closed. You don't know what team you're watching. And then, you know, they don't even, they clap or whatever it is. So there's a little different logistical operations. So Chase and Matt, they did a nice job handling all that. Realistically, how much can you implement in these couple, couple days with the rookies? And what are you trying to hope that they take away from it? Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's a build up. Obviously, we're trying to train them for the job that, you know, we're hiring to do. And there are a lot of things that go into it and ultimately be ready to go for the guys that are going to be here and play in preseason and ultimately the regular season. So there's a there's a build-up phase. Everything's new to them, just the way they operate. These guys all come from great programs, different backgrounds. So it's just a teaching progression. So they can get in there and jump into the vets the offseason. And, and ultimately, the most important thing is be ready to go by September 10th. Last couple of years, you talked about, you know, Rookies picking up things quickly. Mm -hmm. Those things the same, or do they change over the last couple of years? No, we're always looking for ways to improve what we're doing, and but again, you want want the guys that come in here and show initiative, and they're, they're at different points. Some people in the program they may have got huddle calls, they may not have. We understand that, so it's day one. Uh, you know, I could probably answer that if you know, somebody's really jumped out. Probably a little bit better uh, answer for you on Sunday. What's the easiest way for them to stand out? When you have somebody yeah, that's from different places, yeah. how do they stand out in your eyes? Absolutely. It, it's, the, it's the, can you take things that we're implementing in the classroom, you get to the walkthroughs, you know, if you, if you make a, a mistake, can you correct it? Those things, um, the way they operate, they adapt, how quickly they learn. All those things are ways to stand out because this will be more of a mental and building these guys up than really is a physical camp. It's just the way the rules are. You know, we're not going to have contact. Sorry, d we're not going full pads. I'm not paying that fine. <laughs> I like my job, so, and there's a reason why. In all seriousness, I'm joking before anybody gets triggered online and the outrage mob comes after me for something. So that's what that's we're trying to accomplish. Hey, John, you were, uh, yesterday, the full schedule was released, and mm -hmm. you got a, you don't have a bye after the trip to London right. this week. The bye is week 11. How do you feel about having the bye at that point in the season? Great. You know, that's a, the things that we talk about we can control. We're excited to go play in London. We had a great experience two years ago. We have the mindset, we'll play, we, we enjoy that. We'll, we'll make the most of it. It's a really cool thing the NFL does. Like it's, we'll play in Barcelona if they start playing games over there. Send us wherever. Our guys will be ready to roll. So obviously it'll change the, you know, the, the back end of that trip. We took the bye last time. We're, we're playing a little bit earlier, a week earlier than we did in 21. I think teams you're seeing are less and less taking that bye. And a lot of teams have had success recently. Um, actually the one team, I believe the SAT, if uh, Bassetti, if our uh, Mike McClintock's right, then I believe teams are nine and one that not taking the bye the last couple of years playing in Europe. The one loss was our win down in Miami. We took the bye and Miami didn't. So whatever you want to do with those stats, you know we got to be smart in our recovery plan on the back end. And it is what it is. You know we don't control when the bye is, but it's at least it's a little bit earlier than it was a year ago. Arthur, when you Peter, were uh, young on offense last year, the way it's looking, you right. could possibly be younger this year. Any particular challenges that, that come with that? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we do have a young team in terms of age, but the experience, um, you know, with guys at a different point, like with Drake and Dez and Tyler, just like the, some of the other rookies right now, like Bijan and Matt and Javon, I'm, I'm talking about the offensive side where everything is so new to them. There's a familiarity, you know, so they're way ahead of there than they were last year. So that, that helps regardless of their age, the, the experience. Some of the situations they got to play through last year helps. The, a lot of our linemen are back. That certainly helps. So you're just a little bit ahead especially with the language, you guys aren't memorizing, not, not everybody's new. So you, you're able to push it a little bit further, even this time of year mentally. So that's what you feel good about the experience. Um, but yes, in terms of age, we are young. When Bijan spoke to mm -hmm. us during the draft, he said that he felt his versatility was a big part of his game. Absolutely. For your offense, how important is that? It's our offense. You know, I've never sit up here. I know guys have tried to brand their, to stroke their ego. This is Atlanta Falcons offense. We've adapted from anything we did in Tennessee. We've got great staff. This is our offense. I'm just going to go on record to remind you of that. I don't say me and my. I don't have that kind of ego because we got some really good coaches and we evolve year to year. So with, with, with Bijan, how he fits, we have a lot of guys that are versatile. I mean, from John O to CP, 
to Drake, to Canaro Hodge. Like we're excited about our guys. We, we we feel like we can give some people unique matchups, and we'll continue to push the limits. And uh, we're excited about all these rookies out here. Garza, for the guys who you know you, you know that will go, be going deep in the training camp process, how much of this is about teaching them about the Atlanta Falcons' culture? The culture you want to yeah. talk. How much time That's do you spend question. on that with these guys? A lot. That's what I spend a good amount of time on, especially in, in, in the team meetings. That that's a big part of, I feel like, my job every day as a head coach. So, and then everybody's, you know, it's, it's a learning the habits. And it, more importantly, too, and where I feel really good where we're at, it's not just all about what I say or what Dave Ragone or Jerry or, or, or you know, Hawks or anybody. It's all of us, but when that locker room, when you got it right and you got the right guys in there, there's also things they can fill in, you know, Grady. Kyle, guys that have been in the program, Drake, they can help these guys out. Kyle and Drake know what it's like to be a, a top rookie with a lot of weight and expectations, and there's things they can help Bijan with. And that's what, when you get leadership and it rolls down and guys can train each other, teach each other, you're in a good spot. And I feel that's where we're, we're at right now. Last year you were a, a run-heavy team, but it wasn't just right. you. It was the league overall ran the ball. Right. Any theories on to why that, that shift has happened? Yeah, and there's a lot of good theories, and I don't think there's a perfect answer. Um, and, you know, it's a way like, my, where I think sometimes it's just what you're defending. You know, you get a lot of positionless players coming in. These guys are so much more skilled coming from high school and the, the training they have. It's the way the game has been played from the high school level now. It's wide open, guys in the 707. And then you see, the, like, you know, it's a game of, it's like a game of chess, right? A lot of people brought in the jet motion stuff a couple years ago. People were playing single high a lot. Now a lot of things, people's different philosophies, and they let it unfold. Non-traditional formations. So I feel like I can, you know, get everything top down. And then it becomes a number game. Now you want to fit the run. So the traditional is, hey, you give me two high, it's a numbers game, you know, lighter in the box. But even the way, like whether you go three, four, four, three, are you two gap in the front, how are you getting the extra on the, in the shell? And so that's whether you're, you know, five down, three down, four down, whatever it is, you're seeing that right there. But the people are playing it so different. There's so many different combination coverage you're seeing. You got the traditional Tampa two. Now you got guys dropping everywhere, final formation two. So I think it's trends, but a lot of that, I would say, it's practical. People were getting them a lot of the single high, the jet motion, and bringing guys back across where guys are misfitting gaps. Yeah. So now I can see it top down. So that's probably one main reason. And you're seeing it, and it'll, it'll eventually change. Like, uh, I think what people all saw at times, and, you know, you get somebody. I, I remember that, that Monday night game. I think it was a Monday night game. It was Rams, Chiefs. It's like, here's football forever. Well, then, so look, last year the score is down again, you know. In that moment, and you know, people got recency bias, they tend to say something's inevitable, but there's still some old school principles of football that won't change. You know, winning the line of scrimmage, some of the fundamentals. And then, so that's what makes this, it's fun. It's what makes it fun for all of us to cover and to be a part of, uh, because it's not a perfect answer. But that's the best one I can give you. That made, hopefully that made sense. How different is it this year? Um, you guys, after a couple of years, had to clear the books. Uh, now you guys are going to hear draft and, you know, kind of have right. a stamp on the plays. Well, how different is it? Our stamp. You know, there's a lot Falcons of people here, here. Falcons, yep, and what we're trying to do here. So, yeah, it feels good. I mean, can, you, you're, we don't make excuses. You, everybody's got something they're dealing with. So, we've had a, we feel a very productive offseason. Um, really excited about the guys that we've brought in here at every level, the vets, the guys that are in the middle part of their career, and these young guys that need to develop in our program. So, feel really good.